Let's spend a few minutes and talk about ADHD inattentive type in a little bit more detail. Now, this is the type of ADHD that we refer to as Winnie the Pooh type of ADHD because Winnie the Pooh is just the classic picture of this. He's friendly, nice, he loves people, but he doesn't pay attention very well. His head is up in the clouds, he's disorganized, and would certainly have trouble paying attention in a classroom situation. Classically, what we see here with inattentive ADHD is that people who suffer from it are easily distracted. They have short attention spans, especially if what's going on in the classroom or around the house is boring or hard to do. They're often caught daydreaming when people are talking to them. Very commonly, they misplace things. They're always looking for things. Where are my car keys? Where's my homework? They're often late for appointments that they have or to get to school or it's hard to get up in the morning and get dressed and they're often easily bored. And this is most often seen in girls. Now in this type of ADHD, what we see that's kind of interesting is that the front part of the brain, the frontal lobes and the prefrontal cortex are immature. That's one way to look at it. They're immature for the chronological age in terms of neurological maturity and they're under aroused compared to the brains of people of the same age who don't have this kind of inattentive ADHD. And what happens is that makes things even worse is that when you place the brain under a workload, like if you give them a math worksheet or a reading assignment to do or something like that, instead of that part of the brain perking up and getting to work and really starting to process the information, Instead, what we see is that part of the brain starts to slow down, it gets even more under aroused, and in fact looks like it's going to go to sleep. And it's not uncommon to see people actually fall asleep under these conditions. I've seen hundreds of EEGs of people who had inattentive ADHD, and sure enough, as soon as we give them some kind of work to do, the slow brain waves that are associated with falling asleep start to appear and it's very hard to keep these people awake under that kind of uh, work, or that kind of task. So with inattentive ADHD it, it's easy to say that perhaps the biggest challenge is paying attention at school in that classroom setting where there may be 25 or 30 other students and a teacher lecturing and it's just hard to stay tuned to what the teacher is saying. The most common treatment for this is stimulant medications, which work really pretty well. Uh, we've seen with uh, Ritalin or Dexedrine or uh, some other kind of perhaps methylphenidate compound that uh, they, they work by, let me just show you here, they work by increasing the blood flow in the front part of the brain. They also work by increasing the production of certain neurotransmitters. Uh, so that the brain just works more optimally. Get optimum brain performance for that particular brain. And so you can pay attention better, focus the task, uh, focus longer to the task, and even do things that, that you would consider to be fairly boring to do. Now, if you see a therapist, and you should, uh, anytime that you're being treated for ADHD with medication, you should see a therapist or a psychologist who will help you. And they should be teaching skills. Don't go to somebody who's just going to say, well, how did that make you feel? Because insight is not that important here. What is important are learning the skills that you need in order to be successful at school or at work or whatever it is that's going on. So the therapist or psychologist needs to be able to help you to increase focus, learn how to solve problems, get organized, not lose your homework. You know, if you're going to spend all this time doing your homework, the therapist needs to teach you how to get that homework turned in the next day. So anyway, the skills is what's important.